Hey, 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 welcome back, Cloud Scholars. And I want to say a welcome to all those who are on YouTube. Is your first time watching any of the videos? My name is Kieran Tross, and you are at the Cloud Scholars page. So, what I am going to show you today, we are continuing our Azure for Beginners series uh, using Terraform. Um, and hopefully, you've been watching along with the series. This is your first video you watch, and I would suggest and urge that you go back to the first video and go through everything, but it's okay if you just wanna understand what the for each meta argument is because that is exactly what we are gonna be talking about today. So when it comes to Terraform, Terraform can be a very complicated language. It can get complicated really quick, especially when you're building on infrastructure and if a vast infrastructure at that. So what we wanna do is we don't wanna to have to write a bunch of code over and over and over. So what the for each meta argument does, you know, Terraform is written within blocks. You have blocks of code for each resource. But with the meta argument, you can use that same block and iterate more than one resource. So you might have four or five, six, or whatever, how many resources you want to get created, you can go ahead and create them using the for each meta argument. So I am on the HashiCorp page right now. And it literally is just walking you through and talking about the syntax of Terraform's uh, for each meta argument. Uh, so it says the for each meta argument accepts a map of strings or a, a map or a set of strings and creates an instance for each item in the map of or the set. Each instance has a distinct infrastructure object associated with it. Each is separated, created, updated, or destroyed when the configuration is applied. So this is the first example they have here for a resource group. And they have a for each right here and they have you know a value and stuff like that that's here for you and a key and a value excuse me so this would be a key and this would be the value over here and so on and so forth and then it also has um uh for another group it has for west us2 so this is you know a way of doing it this two set is how you would do it for a string so let me go through this with you and show you exactly how we're going to do it for a visual studio code so Right over here, I have a storage account, right? So you're, we're gonna use a storage account for this example. So you have our storage account, which is pretty basic. You understand how to set this up, resource, Azure storage account. And then we have to have our name, resource group, all the other stuff. But then if you wanna associate a container, we would say we're creating a container, but then we have to associate and say, okay, which storage account you're gonna be uh, associated with? And then you would have your container. So let's see how this would look. So over here at Visual Studio Code, um, I am going to, uh, I already have a storage account uh, information set up over here. If you wanna pause the video just so you can copy it and then you know do that, it's not much code, that's why I didn't set up a repo for this video. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll just paste this in here for the container. Now, the issue with this, if let's say if I wanted to create three containers, right? I would now say, okay, boom, boom, and I would have three blocks of code, but we don't really want to do it that way because, you know, it's just a lot of code and extra code to write and read through rather than we can use this cool feature, this meta argument called for each. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out here. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to call it my containers. And then over here, I'm going to do for each to set. And then I'm going to have a bunch of strings. So I'll call this files, or well not dials, files. And then I'll do another one and I'll just call it marketing. And then I'll do another one and I'll just do it, I don't know, tester or something like that, whatever. Um, and then over here for the name, remember it has to do a key value pair. So we're gonna do each dot key. And I need to get these parentheses out of here because it's gonna give me an error. So that's good. And then for the storage account name, what we need to have for here is we need to have the storage account that's associated with it. So mkt.name, okay. And then container access type, we can leave it as private. It's up to you if you wanna change it, you can put as blob. It's really up to you, but that's not really the point of this video where we're talking about the security of it. We're just showing you, I wanna show you just the for each meta argument. So I'm just gonna go throw the pens here because this needs to have a storage account associated with it. So that's definitely gonna be uh, a dependency, right? It's not gonna be able to run. So now I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna do a Terraform plan. And with our plan, we should see four objects being created for our, our unit, right? Our, our infrastructure. So it says plan for to add, because remember, 
I haven't run this yet. I just put the code here, um, but it's it hasn't been established within our Azure um, tenant. And then over here, we have three containers being created. So because what this is saying is for each container, what you're going to do is you're going to set uh, the name to files, marketing, and tester. And then the name here, it says each.key. Right, so you're saying what the information needs to take. Now it's saying, okay, I'm gonna grab the name from each key that's in here. Uh, and then I'm associated with the storage account. And the, the access type, I'm gonna put all of them to private. And obviously it depends on storage account, MKT storage accounts. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say Terraform apply and wait for our code to run. Yes. Okay, back over at the Azure portal. Um, if I click on it, I see there's the storage account that I created. And if I come down to containers, we see the containers are here. And remember, we set our containers to private. Right here, private. And you can see the names are completed correctly within the Azure portal. Okay, so now what we're going to do is since we were able to create our storage account and the containers, what we want to do is we're going to target them and we're going to destroy them. So I'm going to destroy the storage account. So Terraform, destroy, target, Azure, well, actually no, target equals Azure or RM storage account dot MKT storage accounts. Uh, let's do this, take this out. So now it gives me an error message. It's saying for to destroy, which is good because that's what we want. And I'm going to say yes. And you can see there it's destroying the containers. Okay, so now we have four that are destroyed. So we can, we don't have to worry about this code anymore. So I can just block this out. Good, save. Uh, but we're, let's let's try this again and let's see exactly how we can do it using a map. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna create a public IP address, but I wanna create a bunch of different public IP addresses. Okay, so this is the code for Azure public IP address. Um, obviously I have the resource group associated with it as well. So if I were to come here and I needed to create four public IP addresses or three public IP addresses, I would, you know, have my code like this and it would just be like, oh man, you know, um, I would have to do a bunch of different public IP addresses which I really do not want to do, right? So what I would do is I would do something a little bit different. So what I could do is I can do something like my pubs, public IPs, and I could do something like for each. And this would be my key, so I would do um, the public IP would be associated, let's just say with, you know, like a VM or something of the sort. So I could do something like uh, VM pub VM pub 01, right? So that's the public IP for that VM. And um, over here is where I would put all the other information, right? So I can do something like uh, location, equals, actually I wouldn't even do location because I'm gonna do that as my local. So I could do something like allocation method equals static. And let's say if I wanted to switch it up and I wanted to have some in certain locations, so I will say location 
equals West US. And I'm just going to copy this over. And this will be a public IP for VM2. And then this will be a public IP for VM3. And I would say dynamic for this one. This one would be East US. And then this one would be static as well. And this would be Central US. So now down here, I would do something like each dot key because this is the key here resource group I have a locals file so I can just say local dot resource group name and this is my locals file for my resource group but you see I have a location east us but I don't want to use that location so here I'm going to come back here and I'm going to say I don't want to use that location so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say each dot value dot location and then over here for the allocation, I'm going to say each dot value dot allocation method. And I'll do something like that. Now I'll come down here and I'm going to say Terraform plan. Oh, so the reason why I'm getting this is because I need to capitalize that. And now let me come back again. And the reason why I knew that is because it said expect the allocation method to be one of static or dynamic. So you had it capitalized. So let me go back and let me do another plan. Okay, so now we're getting nothing but the green. And it's saying uh, Azure public IPs uh, will be created. And what it's saying right now is creating three, right? So let me go ahead and do Terraform apply. And I'll say yes. Now let's go over to the Azure portal and see what exactly how our, our uh, public IPs are gonna look. All right, so now that we are back over the Azure portal, you can see we have our three public IP addresses. So I'm gonna click on the first one. And if you notice, we have a West US, East US, and Central US. That's exactly what we called it in our code. And if we come over here and I go over to configurations, we can see that this one is static. Pubble two, this one is dynamic. And then Pubble three, this one is static. So that is exactly how we set up our code within our Terraform. So that is how you can do your for each uh, meta argument. Um, there's much more ways of doing it, but I wanted to show you two examples of how you can do the for each meta argument uh, using the two set and then also using a map. So that this way you can get all that information and you can set it up. It just makes your code much cleaner. So, you know, hope you uh, enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it for you. Uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, please leave it in the comment section. As always, um, if you haven't done so already, please like and hit that subscribe button to get more content i will be updating uh this is a live series once again and i will be updating this throughout the all of 2024 so thank you again for watching my name is kieran truss uh, my goal here is to get you from scholar to consultant and of course consultant to expert thank you and see you next time